Welcome to ETF Edge, your go-to place for everything exchange-traded funds. I'm your host, Bob Pisani. Two big stories in ETF land to start the fourth quarter. The first, Ether ETFs, futures, and big inflows continuing into bond funds. Let's talk with Simeon Hyman. He's the head of investment strategy at ProShares. Brian Lake is the global head of ETF solutions at J.P. Morgan Asset Management. And Todd Sohn is the ETF and technical strategist at Strategus. Uh, Simon, today you've got launched three new ETFs right here at the NYSE. ProShares Ether Strategy ETF. E-E-T-H, there, I did the symbol for you. There you go. Good for you. Tell us about what's going on here. Now this is Ether Futures, similar to Bitcoin Futures, but explain what's going on. Just like we launched with Bitto two years ago, had a lot of success, $2 billion in flows, top 5% of volume on the exchange. We know that futures, regulated futures market in an ETF is a great solution. Today, we launched that in the Ether space, EETH. It's ProShares Ether Strategy ETF. And then we launched two combos, BETAE, which is the Bitcoin Ether equal weight, and BETH, which is Bitcoin Ether market cap weight. So we have a full suite of crypto solutions with the largest crypto ETF provider. Yeah, I remember I had you here the day we launched BITO. It is the biggest uh, Bitcoin futures ETF that's out there. Speaking of Bitcoin futures ETF, I've got to ask you about where the Bitcoin future, the spot one is. We all know what happened. Uh, the SEC lost the grayscale case. Uh, Gary Gensler had 45 days to appeal that. We're sort of waiting for them to make a decision. Uh, what's going on with the spot Bitcoin ETF right now? Yeah, I, I think none of us know exactly where that's going to take or how long it would take or what form that would be when it's all said and done. What we know is the futures ETFs are here today. And what's important about that is that regulated futures market, it resolves a lot of the challenges as the spot market is maturing. All the news we saw the last year or so with the exchanges and those things, ultimately they'll mature. But in the meantime, a future solution is there and it works real well. Bitto, two years out. Yeah. Since its inception, 3% off spot Bitcoin. Most of that is fee and nothing is free to invest in. So it works really Todd, well. Todd Grayscale won the case against uh, the SEC. Basically, the court said, you guys approved a Bitcoin futures ETF. They are like products. You prove that, you got to approve a spot Bitcoin. Now they've got an Ether futures ETF. Is, is the implication here that there's a good chance of getting a spot Ether and a spot Bitcoin? Mm. Or am I stretching this? Hey, you would think so. It's a matter of time, right? And the way I'm looking at this with the, the, in, the indulge of product that's come to the market is it's rare when you get a new asset class, right, to enter into the ETF lexicon. We've had equities for some time. We have bonds, commodities. Crypto seems to be the next step. It may not be for everyone, given the volatility involved. But I can understand from an issuer's perspective why you'd want to try and take advantage of that market. We'll see how the asset class performs. But again, this is a new area for everyone to get involved into. So I think that's why you're seeing such popularity uh, with all these releases. Brian, you want to handicap the odds of a, a spot Bitcoin ETF that may be a little out of your ballpark, but you're an old ETF watcher. You've been around a long, long time. You know this game. I think it will happen. I don't know when. You're making your PR people got very whole, happy the whole, over here. The whole family here. Uh, <laughs> but, this is, but this is innovation, right? Think about like another industry. So if, if we went to Ford Motor Company and you said, why are you in, in, innovating with these seat belts and the, all these airbags? You, of course you are, because it's better for the, the end consumer of those. And that's how we think about it. You know, we think about fiduciary active management. What are things that we can put into these uh, products to help investors get better outcomes? Did he just call me an airbag? I think he just did. <laughs> what happened there? No, you're See, the seatbelt you in that little, analogy. You're the, you're the driver. You're I driving wanna, this car. <laughs> look how fast he recovered on that. Very good. Um, I want to return to uh, get more out of you on the Ether futures. Yep. Uh, you got two other products that you launched today. Uh, these are both of them have exposure to the returns on Bitcoin and Ether. Now this in intrigued me. I, why do we need the combination of them? What is it? What do you? What are, what's the appeal here? We, we've launched BETE, which is Bitcoin and Ether equal weight, and BETH, which is market cap weighted. Look, they are the one and two. These are the two largest cryptocurrencies. If you want exposure to both, you know you want exposure to both. It made a lot of sense to launch uh, launch the combined products. There's two slightly different things, and we don't. We could talk about this for hours. Bitcoin fixed supply, ether not fixed surprise, fixed supply. Ether gives you exposure to the Ethereum ecosystem. Bitcoin is proof of uh, is proof of work, and ether is proof of stake. We got all sorts of little things here. Bottom line: the one and two 
cryptocurrencies, offering them combined for folks who want one-stop shopping. I think shopping, the major thing sense. to me is, and the reason I like Ether is, is, is DeFi in general, but smart contract concepts, too, that seem to matter a lot, which is a very different concept than when you're dealing with Bitcoin, there's, right? There's so many aspects to this, you know, whether it's, whether it's your, and, and the way it can work in a portfolio, whether you view it as, as digital gold, whether you view it as, as a uh, alpha satellite, what we know is the correlations are low to, to uh, stocks and bonds. And that's super important because we know correlations in traditional asset classes are going to one rapidly for everything. Uh, even stocks and bonds often do the same thing. And having an uncorrelated asset class is very important. Yeah. Um, I just want to move on and talk about a couple of other things. It, I, I think the key point here is you're almost acting like you, you you want a diversification in stocks, and if you have, if you're in the crypto universe, you almost want a diversification a little bit in, in the two biggest ones here. That's what it seems like. It's I'm, maturing. It's a sign of maturation to me. Absolutely, I and mean, they, they don't. Obviously, Bitcoin and Ether are more correlated to one another um, than they are to traditional asset classes. But for sure, it makes a lot of sense to have exposure to both the number one and number two cryptocurrencies.